Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's David Oldenburg with the Online Money Show. Man, I can't tell you how good it is to be back. I've been off the last three weeks. If you haven't been following this, and, and maybe you haven't, uh, three weeks ago I did a show with Christine and I was sick. Man, I had the flu, I had a cold, had this lung infection, all kinds of stuff going on. And uh, I, it ended up getting worse. And I was uh, literally down for like eight or nine days. And then uh, last week, I still couldn't do the show because I didn't have a voice. Well, everything is back. And uh, it's awesome to be here. Taking three weeks off was good for me, good for my mind. Probably good for everybody else getting me off the air for three weeks. And uh, I'm really, really excited to be back. Today, we're starting part one of our brand new uh, Blocking for Cash, the epic four-part series. And uh, today, uh, just a moment, we're going to introduce Craig Fifield, an incredible guest, and we're going to be talking about some cool stuff today, including uh, some webmaster tools and analytics. And we're going to talk about how to really get a blog post to rank. And uh, a little bit later in the show, if we have time, we're going to talk about some blogging basics, uh, WordPress stuff, and SEO. It is uh, going to be a really cool show. Uh, but before we get to that point, I want to introduce the uh, connection queen. Uh, Christine DeGraff, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm glad to see you're back and glad you have your voice. Uh, yeah, you know, it's hard to, you know, I mean, I can be out of a lot of things, but I mean, uh, when I'm doing a show like this, i got to have a voice. Uh, yeah, and, well, for sure. <laughs> and, um, and and I literally, I mean, I'm telling you, for two weeks, I, I couldn't talk. I was coughing so much. I had this bug that's going around that's hit a lot of people really hard. And yeah, I know a couple people have said they got it. So yeah, so so good to see you back. I was starting to get a little worried. Oh, you know, I was too. <laughs> I mean, literally, you know, I didn't I didn't sleep. Uh, um, I literally didn't sleep for almost eight days straight. Jeez. And, and, and the reason for it is I was exhausted, but every single time I would fall asleep for more than a couple seconds, I would start coughing and it would wake me up. Wow. And so by the eighth day, I mean, I was so exhausted, I could hardly walk. And finally, my body just crashed, and I got some sleep. And uh, and it was great. Anyway, enough with that. I'm back. Uh, Christine's here. We have an amazing guest today, Craig Fifield, for uh, part one of our epic four-part Blogging for Cash series. Uh, Craig Fifield, welcome to the Online Money Show. What's up, David? Thanks for having me. <laughs> and it's great. You said it'd be great to meet me face to face. We've been talking the last thirty minutes in the green room. Craig, uh, you're one sharp guy. You know a lot of stuff. And uh, today is going to be a great show. Um, like we always do, I know a lot of people know who you are. Let's take your uh, sixty second elevator speech. Who are you, and what are you doing here on Google? Um, well, I I'm a, an old school web marketer. I got my start back at the end of 1995, the beginning of 96, with my own web marketing business doing mostly SEO. Uh, quick, soon after that, I got hired by a startup where we built some of the first tools for SEO, actually the very first tool for SEO, um, and also some of the first tools for affiliate marketing, email marketing, and e-commerce. And we were so successful there that after about a year of that, Microsoft bought us out. And I continue to do a lot of uh, a lot of that development on new marketing tools for them for about 10 years. And along the way there, I also started my own pretty massive affiliate network, which is where a lot of my blogging experience comes in. Um, I, at one point, I was running at somewhere around 60 different WordPress sites, um, all of which were you know blogs or niche sites that contributed to each other. Um, and all needed to be optimized and ranked and needed posts and, and all that. So that's where my blogging experience comes from. And these days, um, just hanging on Google+, picking up consulting clients here and there, and working with Christine DeGraff on the awesome Circle Scope. And, Go ahead, Christine. David, you can see with that kind of background, um, when I partnered up with Esham um, on Circle Scope, you know, um, it was originally just going to be him and I, you know, um, and then I I had met Craig along the way, and, you know, he was looking for a new challenge. He told me his background, and I was just blown away. I'm like, oh, we need him. We need this guy. And, um, you know, Craig, thank God, because he is really, you know, take. I can already see he's going to be taking things to the total next level. You know, um, I hope. So I'll try. Oh, no, you definitely will. I, I have... 100% confidence, and um, and it's you know we're really excited. We're in beta testing now. We're trying to get this. Well, we're in pre-beta testing, and um, <clears throat> it's going to roll out soon. Well, um, 
Now, speaking of circle scope, so what, what's going on with that? I mean, earlier in the year we talked about at some point there was going to be a big rollout. Is that still kind of in the works, or is that coming up soon, or kind of what's going on with that? I would. I think the the best thing to say is we're hoping soon. We we have a lot of bugs. We, basically, we added, you know, we we bit off a little bit more than we could chew. I think so. We added some new UI, which is a big step, and we also added quite a few features. And okay. so right now we're we're just dealing with you know the bugs that that introduces, and. Um, you know, new to me is just having one developer. I'm used to having a whole team, so <laughs> things, move, things move a lot slower. Now, as far as blogging goes, Craig, obviously you've been blogging. How long have you said you've been blogging? How many years? Uh, myself, I've been blogging since 2005. Wow, okay, so you've been blogging quite a while. How big is blogging? I mean, for the person watching right now, maybe they're thinking about getting into blogging or they're already a blogger. How many bloggers are out there? I mean, do you even know, or how big is the blogging world? I have no idea, but it's it's huge. Um, but what's really, pr you know, becoming more and more prominent is doing video and and in interacting on uh, the social networks. Kind of like what we're doing right now. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so that that would be one tip I'd give right off the bat is if people are are doing well blogging and they're not doing video, they should be stepping into the video world. Get on that camera. You know, don't be afraid. Um, if you're not going to do it, your competition's going to. And, it is you know. it is scary for people though. I mean, you know, I I just got on camera for the first time um, back in October. Um, thanks to David, actually, he's kind of forced me to because he announced me as a guest, even though I hadn't actually said yes. And <laughs> I was kind of I kept putting him on hold, but I'm like, yeah, sure, someday. And then he's just like, next week, you know. So um, I started, I got out the camera and started doing some um, video logs, and it was just. <laughs> I was terrified. And, but, um, I, I was go ahead, go ahead, Greg. I was nervous as well. Um, but what I thought about the way I look at it is, I'm like this anyways, whether it's recorded, on tape or not. You know, someone's got to talk about this stuff. So why not it be me? I'm I'm a goofball at home. I say the wrong things if I give a presentation in public. What does it matter if that happens on video? That's the worst thing that could happen. So be it. Well. I jack up and say stupid stuff all the time, um, so it's not a big deal. As a matter of fact, I saw myself in an HOA blooper the other day, uh, mm -hmm. which Mark Seidel took, by the way, totally out of context. Something that I said, I said that awesome. all, yeah, I said all women are crazy, which, by the way, is true. But, <laughs> but, but the way, but he took it out of context. I was actually talking about what somebody else said. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, yeah, Mark, uh, thanks, buddy. And yeah, there's going to be a Mark Seidel bloopers uh, someday that I'm nice. going to do. Um, well, I just had my 20-year wedding anniversary uh, last month, so I can say that you're right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, and, 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 and actually, actually, Craig, we're in the same boat. Uh, I'm celebrating 19 years of marriage in two months. Oh, awesome. Congratulations. So, yeah, uh, you too. So, I mean, uh, been married a long time. If you've been, any guy that's been married 19, 20 years will tell you all women are crazy. This is what it is. Yeah. Uh, moving on with that, um, you wrote a blog post. You wrote a blog post, I, think, I don't know if it was last week or the other day. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? In a very short period of time, you had, I think, 2,000 or more plus ones. And uh, this is going to be kind of our segue into talking about how to write a blog post that ranks. Yep. So I wrote a blog post that um, it was on authorship, author rank, and authority, so Google authorship. Um, and I, it was a guest post for the G Plus Geeks, and it ended up getting 2,000 plus ones just in a, a few days, which was surprising to me. I expected to hit, um, you know, around 200 or 300, uh, but it, you know, my ultimate goal was to be the most popular post on their site. And when I realized that Mark Trappigan and Hovnanian, Stephen Stefan Hovnanian, had posted there and gotten like 600 plus ones, I was like, "Damn it!" You know, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't think I was gonna make it. And then, you know, it just caught on. It, it you know, it hit home. I, I think it struck a common note with a lot of people, and uh, it kind of exploded. I think That's awesome. Of, I think one of the um, reasons for that is so many of these posts about authorship and author rank, um, they they tend to be written more you know, for um, an expert level, um, and I think that you brought it down to what, you know, for the average blogger could understand. Right, and so. that's that's what I refer to as a gap. So when you're looking to write um, blog posts that, that will really take off, 
is you should know your niche or know what you're going to write about well enough that you can see holes in the knowledge or a gap. So a hole would be where something's just completely missing. So I wrote a post a long time ago about Vine, and it was a guide to Vine. And at the time, Vine was new, and there wasn't a guide. And so that was just this complete hole. It was like, well, I'll just fill that hole. Uh, and that worked out really well. Uh, but in this case, with authorship, it was like there's tons and tons of posts of, on authorship. And then I had people asking me, you know, over a course of a couple of weeks, a few people asked me some beginner-type questions about authorship, and I realized, ah, there's, you know, I know the, the wealth of posts that are out there, and no one has co covered this in a simple way that I, I'm comfortable with linking these people to, to say, here's where you can go to understand it. Uh, and that's where, you know, that's what I mean about a gap. It's like there's this wealth of knowledge. But there's this little gap where, you know, someone needs to summarize this and say it plainly so, you know, the regular people can understand. Uh, and when you do that right, mm -hmm. you know, if you're listening to your audience and you do that right, it can take off like my post did. Yeah, and isn't it amazing how, the, how blogging works that way where you can take something that, uh, like authorship, uh, where a lot of people are writing about it. There's probably hundreds if not thousands of articles out there already. But you can do something. You can take a, a topic like that, give a little bit different twist, and have some real success with it. Right. We, um, a matter of fact, I, uh, on I think week three, we're going to have Mike Alton on. We're going to be talking about promoting your blog. And uh, Mike has been on the show in the past, and we've talked about newsjacking. You know, we yep. talked. To, yeah, which, which I mean, I love. I do newsjacking all the time. Um, yep. Uh, great. She should probably. She should probably explain that a little. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, let's let Craig explain it. Craig, you seem to know what newsjacking is. Why don't you uh, give a quick explanation? Yep, I, I think of it more as uh, riding the trend. So if if, pe if you know, like you're saying, newsjacking, if there's, um, well, my Vine post is a great example. A lot of people were, you know, Vine was brand new. It was barely three weeks old at the time, and I had been using it a lot. And it was just being talked about in the news, on blogs, everywhere, every single day, ad nauseum. And so I was using Vine just to get to know it, and it was like, well, why don't I just use this time to write a guide? Because I could see that no one had written the guide, and I knew if I newsjacked, if I if I got on that train, I would get extra attention, uh, and that's what I did. Now, so, yes. So what actually happened with that? I mean, you obviously had some success. What? So you you wrote kind of a guide or a, a, some information on how to use Vine. Is that correct? Yep. Yep. Yeah. And at the time, it was it was the first guide. So while all these people were writing about you know a tip or two here and there or how neat Vine was, my my post stood out a bit as you know here's a complete guide as to how to use it. Well, you wrote uh, in kind of in preparing for the show, you you gave us five great bullet points that I want to talk about. Five great bullet points on kind of how to write an awesome blog post that ranks. And the first one, I kind of want to go through each one of these. We have some time here. The first one was formatting. What what do you mean by formatting? Um, and, well, I mean two things. Uh, formatting can help the search engines better understand the context, the content of the page. So it creates better context, you know, for them as they're scanning, you know, crawling the site. In in you know, in comparison to big blocks of text, uh, you know, big giant paragraphs. You know, as far as the user though, you can create a lot more visual appeal. And vi what visual appeal will do is improve the you know the, the amount of people that want to engage with the post because now it's visually appealing. They'll it'll improve the time on site, which will also help improve um, your rankings. So and pe people tend to read on the web like they'll scan, they'll look, at the, right. they'll read the bullet points, and then they might you know they'll go back and read. Um, but you, right. you you know if you look at a page that has like just five gigantic paragraphs. No right. bolding, no formatting, no bullet points, nothing to break the eye up. Um, right. You know, then then you tend to walk away. Right. You want them. To, you want it to be. You want it to catch the user as soon as they hit the page, so that they don't hit the back button. And big blocks of text will cause people to do that right away. Uh, and you also want to make it super scannable. So by making it scannable, you use big headings, subheadings, bullet points, plenty of images. If you're writing a blog post without an image today, I don't know what you're doing. You know, oh, every great point. If if it's not worth your time to find an image, it's not worth you writing it, in my opinion. You, you need to you need to add media. You know, even video. If you have time to do video, um, you want to improve the white space as much as you can. You want to have shorter line lengths. Uh, Dustin had a great post. Dustin Stout had a great post that he shared um, last week, where the you know he mentioned studies that say the average line length 
should only be 50 to 75 characters. That makes a big difference. If people see a long, long lines of text, they have a lot harder time reading. It looks a lot more like you have a lot more to read and you want to leave the site. And any of those things that cause people to leave or spend less time on your site affects the, your ranking in the search index because Google can tell when you click the back button or leave the site. Craig, when you're talking about character length, are you talking about, uh, I just want to confirm, are you talking about just in general or are you talking so it's more mobile friendly or what, what is the point behind it just looking like it's easier to read? Uh, just overall usability. So, you know, two, there's two things. The visual appearance of it, so when you look at it, now it's less scary and you're going to stay there and read. But it's also been proven that it's easier for people to read from one line to the next when they're the pro where appropriate sizes. And the, I, think, the way I think it's because your eyes don't have to move as much back and forth. And right. actually, I think uh, I just saw, I don't know if you saw, I shared a post the other last week that they're coming out with this new device that it can flash words on the screen um, up to six or up to a thousand words per minute. And because um, your eye doesn't have to move, um, yep. you can read much faster and uh, retain the information. Yep, and I used to use a like tool just screen. like that. Yeah, yeah. Really that, cool. that, that's fascinating. Yeah. Well, I, I actually was not even aware of that. So, so Christine, they just flash. So it's, it's just rather than going back and forth, you're just like dead on looking. Yeah, and they yeah. they have the way they have it is they they have figured out I guess um, where to like um, align the text so that your eye doesn't have to move and you can read and retain the information. Um, I'm. It started out. It was. They have a test, and first you do like a hundred four or. I think the average person reads at like 250 words per minute, and then they move you up to 450, and then they move you up to 600, you know, and then 1,000. 1,000 was a little fast for me. I was doing, I was reading the 600 one. See, I like that because, you know, I don't, one of the things that I hate is I hate sitting down, like, like reading, a, you know, you get a book and it's 200 pages long, and, you know, it takes so long to read. If there was a way that I could read that book in half the time yeah. uh, and, and retain even traditional retention levels, which for me is probably about two percent. Um, <laughs> if, if 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 I could even you know do traditional uh, retention levels, that would be awesome to be able to. It actually says back. it improves. Um, it, you know, it improves your um, comprehension of it. Right. I yeah. think it so would cool. up, up until your the speed gets too fast, right? Yeah. I actually oh, or use the yeah, tool. If, you, if you blink, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was that's what was wrong with it. I actually used a tool just like that years ago. And uh, that was the problem. If you look away for a second, now you've totally lost your place because that thing exactly. going by so fast. <laughs> uh, that, that's, that's totally cool. Hey, I want to get to a couple of these comments. First, uh, 17 minutes after the hour, this is the Online Money Show with me, David Oldenburg, the Connection Queen, Christine DeGraff, Craig Fifield. We are doing part one of the epic four-part Blogging for Cash series. Today we're talking about some really cool stuff uh, with blogging and uh, how to write uh, an awesome blog post that ranks We've been talking with Craig about a post that he just wrote a short time ago. Had over 2,000 plus ones. Now let me. I know we have some people today that I uh, are from Facebook and they've never been on Google Plus before. I know you're watching right now. A plus one is like a Facebook like. So imagine getting 2,000 likes on a Facebook post. That would be uh, pretty cool. Want to get to a couple of our comments? We have one here. The first one here is from Allison Heath, and she writes in uh, formatting. Heading, headings, images, shorter line lengths, video and posts, good info for posts that are less scary and easier to read. Um, right another on. one, uh, did you want to comment on that, uh, anyone? I would just say, add to that, increase your font size. Almost everyone is using much smaller font than they should be for the screens that people are reading on these days. That what helps you, as well. What do you recommend? Um, you need to go by the line length that you have is the ideal, but Right now, if you just went with like 14 pixels, you're doing pretty well. Um, but you can go all the way up to 18. Wow! And it's, see, now, it's a little, it's a little huge. strange when you first see it, but mm -hmm. um, it it works much better. It's a lot easier to read. It's um, it's weird how we've um, you know we keep circling around in the web development we world. From mm -hmm. you know it was big font and then big font became ugly and then you wanted tiny font and now right. tiny font is like well that's not readable. Let's go back yeah. to the big font. Well, but, well the, I mean, the there best are, part is there's, there's a lot more font choices now, though. So, um, right. you know, where it, it does look, you can still make it and, look very nice. And I think too, you know, I mean, I, I experienced this. You know, I'm finally to that age now, <laughs> where <laughs> you know it's it's hard for me to read 
little tiny, I don't wear bifocals or anything, but it's hard for me to read that little tiny fine print up close. You yeah. know, and, and so, you know, I find, constantly find myself doing the thing that I used to laugh at my parents for. You know, that thing that where you put the paper like way out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and it, it, it's it's painful. So I'm I'm, yeah. I'm all for the big fonts. Let's go here. We have another comment here from uh, Joe Ray. Uh, Afternoon, y'all. Let's make some money. Gorgeous day here. Love my circle scope. Freed my circles of useless ads and left nothing but awesome engagers. There you uh, go. Clean up those circles. <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, totally cool. Let me just get rid of this one here and bring up another one here from uh, I think this is. How would you pronounce? Is it Sari or Carrie or me? Uh, we'll say maybe Carrie. Right. Uh, okay. And let me just see here. Looking forward to this. I'm tired of calls and emails from big companies wanting to feature uh, on my blog mm. for free. Oh man, isn't that the truth? Um, we get so much. Uh, everybody wants. It's social media. It's social media. Everybody wants something for free. Uh, everybody wants as much as they can possibly get for free, and you can get a lot on social media for free. So you can't blame somebody for trying. Craig, what do you say about that? I mean, if you've got a blog and you're kind of successful, should you be letting people in for free, or should you be trying to charge everybody? What should you do? Um, I would let them in for free if they're providing value. You know, if they're going to bring some sort of an audience with them, or they're going to um, provide a, high, a nice high quality post. There's no reason not to let them in for free. But what you want to watch out for is um, if they're just looking to drop links. You know, if they're just if their whole point is to get a link from your blog to theirs, you want to just move on to the next person. There's um, ad advertorial type things where they, you know, it's yeah, really or, or a big advertisement. A lot of people will. Um, They'll write a half decent post, but then have a link to their own site in there, and it's pretty clear if they've never written for you before, for you before that they have a link to their own site. You know, you know what they're up to. If if you're really looking for guest posts, I would suggest having a, a policy on your site of what you're looking for, and even a form that they have to fill out um, with links to their other work. So that way, you, you can save a lot of time, um, you know, pruning through. Well, that's good. Let's get back to some of these tips because um, he he's only covered the first one so far. Well, I, know, I know, and I'm how dying to, to get some of the better ones. Yeah, so how to write a blog post that ranks. She said, um, you know, to improve the formatting. Yeah. Uh, tell us some other things, um, some other tips. Well, um, everybody, I think, knows at this point that longer is usually better. Um, so the, what happens when you write a long post is you end up hitting a lot of the SEO, you know, the, the, a lot of the good keywords. So it just forces you to write more. Uh, but in terms of length, people tend to really focus on length. So should I have 500 words? Should I have 1,500 words? In general, the longer the better, as long as it's good, con you know, good quality content. But you can still get away with short posts as long as you're writing a complete post. Are you providing a complete answer to a question, or are you, are you truly covering that, con you know, that concept? If it's only 300 words and you've nailed it, that's fine. You can you can move on to your next post. So in terms of length, just look to provide a complete post. So um, you're saying that quality actually matters. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Completeness matters. So okay. like on my, my authorship post, I really only wanted to write about authority because um, that was where people were confused. They didn't really understand what that was. So writing about authority, I had to write about authorship. And so I had the whole post done. And then I went, oh, this isn't complete. I haven't talked about author rank at all. So I had to go back in and add that whole section and rework my post a little to make it, you know, perfectly complete, a, a, a perfect summary rather than a summary that was good but missing something. That makes a big difference. Good point. It, it, um, it, it really does. And there's a, there's a great question on content that I want to bring up real quick because it, it goes with what we're talking about here. Um, this guy, uh, Yash Trivedi, uh, he's a young guy. I was actually talking with him in the comments yesterday, and uh, he was kind of interested in the fact that my son... Uh, makes money online and does things and we were talking about that he writes in can you make a video in your blog would it be more appealing as video and then he says can let can it, I'm assuming can it let the average person cover more info in a blog can you kind of read between the lines of what he's asking there I think what he's asking is would it be good to have video uh, actually in your uh, uh, in your blog yeah absolutely um, yeah, I would hope, I, if you're willing to make videos, I think it's one of the best things that you can do. I would always, though, um, supplement that with text. So if you're going to have the video on your blog, you want the blog post or at least a, a nice 
lengthy summary, summary describing what's ideas. in the video. Yep. And you know, uh, I, I, same thing on YouTube as well. Question for you, because I read this the other day, and I don't know. There's there's a whole movement out there of people saying that every time you do a video, like let's say you do a blog post and you do a video within your blog, maybe you do the video and then you do maybe a text write-up on uh, as well. When that video gets on YouTube, should you use that transcribe feature and actually go through and have it be completely accurate word for word? I've heard that that can actually help you in the search engines as well, uh, yep. the, the, the transcribe. Talk to us a little bit about that because I just kind of learned about this maybe a couple months ago. I haven't been doing that for my videos. How important is it to do the transcribe and have the actual text there? It's huge. So um, I actually I haven't used the, the feature to do it. I've always had um, VAs do it, but it's the same, basically the same process. So anytime anytime you have media, whether it's images or video, um, you know, embedded PDFs, whatever it is, you want to provide supporting text. So having the transcript on YouTube provides that for you. Uh, you know, if you post that within your description, and it's it's one of the easiest ways to get content, whether you hide someone, uh, hire someone to write it, or use the the tool itself. And then on your blog post or wherever else you post it, you can write your own um, summary or or you know long description of the video, uh, yeah. because the the search engine basically looks at the text, at how to index and how to rank you. So the video, if, if you don't have that, isn't really going to rank that well. Well, yeah, it was interesting. I actually ran across, and I wish I would have written down the name. I was talking to somebody the other day in the comments, and I was asking them, you know, they were telling me that they were actually working on transcribing a video for YouTube, and we got to talking about it, and they said that they work for somebody that has, a, a, I guess, a fairly successful YouTube channel, and their job is to take every video that's uploaded and to transcribe it perfectly uh, mm -hmm. for SEO, and they get paid for that. And I thought, wow, that's kind of interesting. That here's a new kind of career path out there for somebody that's a really good writer. Uh, they could be a transcriber for YouTube and you know get paid an hourly rate to, uh, to, to do that. Yep, yep. So I have a client, uh, an e-commerce client, that uh, found out that they had access to, you know, their, their suppliers allowed them to use their YouTube videos on their site or on YouTube. So I went in and took the 10 best and, you know, ripped them off of YouTube and re-uploaded them and had transcriptions made. And now, I think last time I checked, they're getting about 10,000 visitors a month from those videos. That's, and they, pr they probably rank higher than the original. Right, because the original bit has like one or two line descriptions or no description at all. So we're getting all the YouTube traffic and we're also ranking in Google. And That's really it was, cool. It was a really minimal expense and it's I think YouTube is now their number four source of traffic. Um. The next part three, uh, or bullet point three, I should say, you wrote series versus single. And I'm assuming you're talking about kind of like what we're doing right now. We're doing our epic four-part series on blogging. Are you talking about that kind of thing? In other words, if you're going to write a blog post, uh, if you can kind of break it up into two or three or four or five sections and make it a series, that's better? Or, or are you Absolutely. saying that single is better? Absolutely. So sort of like I just said, um, you know, if your blog, if you don't have time to find an image to go with your blog post, it's not even worth writing the blog post these days. I feel like if you have time to write a blog post that's any good, you've already done the research. Um, you already have all the thoughts in your head about that topic to easily spit out two or three more on the subject on very related, closely related topics. Um, so it could be a specific series like you're doing with the videos uh, or with this HOA, um, or you can just look at it like I want to make five or six posts that will complete this topic. So basically exhaust, you know, come up with a micro topic that you can exhaust so that you now own that keyword space in the search engines. And I when you do that, you want to make sure you cross link those posts so that, you know, you get the internal linking going on. Um, and an example of where I'm about to do this is uh, some of the authorship posts. I've written two or three um, and I've made sure it's on a micro topic. Most of mine are around setting up um, authorship with WordPress and the reason for that is so that I don't have to compete with the big boys that are talking about general authorship so now that I have two posts written it's really clear that there's four or five others that I can write with my eyes closed it'll take no effort and when I release those each one gets promoted again each one might pick up a link or two and then when I put them together into a series I can then write a new post about the series and now I have all this you know I'll have five or six 
or seven posts that are all interlinked, that all got promoted, and took me much less time than if I had written five or six other posts that are unrelated to that topic. Do you know what I mean? Because I already did a lot and, and of the work. Also, and, and you bring up a good point, because also if you wrote a completely different post or a single post, it has to hold, it has to stand on its own merit. Uh, right. In other words, like you said, if you have one blog post and it's somewhat successful and then you can follow up with another one and feed off of that one, then it allows you to kind of build that momentum and kind of keep going. Right. I can could, I could yeah. tell you from experience when writing a series of blog posts, and like Craig said, you've already done the research, you have it in your head, the best thing to do to make sure that you actually do the series and that so and so that it um, works well together is to actually write it all at the same time or at least get outlines for the you know the the say if you're writing the first one get some outlines there for your second and third and fourth so that you know you can then go fill it in later but you know it's it's better to write it kind of that way a good example is um, Rick Rick Ellis Eliason um, did his um, 50 um, Google Plus tips series and I asked and it was wildly successful here on Google Plus um, I shared actually shared it every day for 50 days um, I asked him about that you know did you um, how did you know did you just every day try to think of something how did you do it and he said well when he started writing some blog tips he realized he had you know some Google Plus tips he had so many he decided I need to make a series and he said that he kind of put a general outline together for the entire series you know um, at the beginning so he had like some ideas for each one and then you know wrote them as he went so I think that you know doing that creating that outline can really make a difference yeah I, I think it makes a huge difference on on the book that I'm writing right now one of the things that I've had to do is I've had to sit down and write the title of each chapter first uh, because if you start writing a book, uh, you don't want to start writing a book and then later realize, oh my gosh, that information is going to be in a different chapter. And so what you have to do is you have to kind of say, you know, the, the first chapter we're going to talk about this, second chapter we're going to talk about that. You have to have an outline, and then after the outline is written, then you go back and write each chapter based on the outline. And, exactly. And, and uh, uh, blogging is kind of the same way. Um, yep. You know, I see... Craig, the, the, the next uh, uh, bullet point here, and I'm, I, you talked with Christine, <laughs> with Christine about this one, internal linking, and is it, is it co-citation? Yep, yep. Okay. So, and this is really important in regards to the series. It's important in regards to your whole blog that you should always be working on your internal linking and making it um, as good as it can be to, to drive more interaction with your site and to improve your SEO. Uh, co-citation uh, refers more to external linking so when you're linking out to other sites uh, like on my authorship post I linked out to Mark Trafigan and Eric Ng and what that does is when you link to two other sources or more than two sources whoever you're linking out to even if those sources aren't linked to each other on their own sites they're now co you know they're, they've been co-cited twice on your own page now they're related and, and you're get, and you are the connection now. Right, and I'm the connection. So it, it elevates me in that, you know, in that relationship and it also elevates them. So if Mark and Eric had never been linked together, now they are on my site and Google says, Oh, these two must be related. All of that relationship, you know, it counts. So that's partly why I, I linked out is I wanted to be I wanted my post associated with their authority. So that's one of the reasons why it would be important to stay focused. So if you were linking to two completely unrelated, um, you know, things that had nothing to do e with each other, that wouldn't make sense to the search engines, and yeah. might discount your site. Would that be a fair? Statement? I wouldn't say it would discount, but it wouldn't really, it wouldn't be as helpful as being on theme, and it would be a little bit strange to be linking to completely unrelated places. Um, but yeah, you would want to stay on one theme, for sure. All, all really, really interesting information. The linking thing to me in the blogging is very, very interesting because you read so much about the pros and cons of like guest blogging and linking, and um, and and of course doing your own blog and linking to other uh, sources that you have. So you know maybe you're writing a blog post on authority, 
but you also have a website and you want to promote that website, so you link there. What advice can you give on that? I mean, if you're if you're writing, you know, let's say you're writing on a on a a, a website, maybe a WordPress website, you're blogging, but you're also taking those posts and you're sharing them on Google Plus. How can you? Is there a way to link those two together or to do those things in such a way where you get kind of more bang for your buck? Yeah. So basically. In my view, you always want the best content on your own site, if at all possible. So I look at the social media channels as as the source to, you know, hair, share highlights of your posts or use for um, all those things that pop in your mind that you don't think warrant a full blog post can go onto Google Plus or whatever channel that that you you know that you use. But it, with Google Plus, for example, when you share those tips or you share a highlight of your blog post or your blog post in general. Um, you want to make sure, if possible, that you get the social signals coming back to your site. So when using that authority post again, um, when I shared that, I made sure to include the single link. Um, I used a, a nice big image to encourage the engagement to get more plus ones. I only used a single link within the post itself on Google+. And so when people plus that, because they like the image or because they actually read the post, all those pluses get transferred to the blog itself. Uh, also, if you, it's a little less engagement, but if you use the link option where you just embed the link of it to your post, all those plus ones will transfer as well. Did you, so you just, did you see that they have a new, um, the way that the thumbnails are, are now going to be full size images? Yeah, that's pretty awesome. That so is totally cool. Here on Google Plus, yeah, where it's, right. it was, you shared a link and you had a little tiny thumbnail. Now, as as, as long as your images, I think, are um, are higher quality, um, you know, they're they'll should be displayed as a larger um, photo. That's yep. cool. Um, it is. Uh, we're coming up on twenty um, till the hour. This is the online money show. We're talking to Craig Fifield today about um, blogging for cash, and I want everyone to go get their miner hat and their uh, gloves and pans because we're going to talk about how to mine for blog post gold now. Um, but first, let me bring up a couple comments that we have here, and let um, let Craig answer some of these. Um, Yash um, said, "Should you link to other bloggers or sources that are related or credible?" And I think you already answered that as a as a yes, right? Absolutely. O old school thinking. You used to want to hoard, you know, page rank and not link out, but that's not the way it works. You you definitely want to be linking to authorities and respectable sources in your niche. And um, Scott Scowcroft says, one great idea is to find golden nuggets from an HOA, then write a blog post about that, and that great HOAs might beget three or four such great blog posts. Absolutely, Scott. Totally. Yeah, great, great advice. Great All advice. right, Craig, so how do, how do we mine for this blog post gold? Well, I wanted to talk about um, researching your old posts and some tools you can use to research your competitors, but since and I had them in a little different order, but since we were talking about internal linking, why don't we talk about researching your old posts first? And um, okay. if we if we don't get to competitors, we can do a whole nother show. Oh, yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> so researching your old posts. So a lot of people, if, if you've been blogging for a while, um, a lot of people don't realize it's really easy to look at your analytics and webmaster tools to figure out um, posts that you have that are already getting a lot of traffic or that are already ranking in spots where you can easily move them up um, in ranking and start getting, you know, easily, you know, get 20%, 30%, 50% more traffic if you bump them up the rank. So the ways to do that, um, if you're looking at your Google Analytics, um, the, what you want to look at is your top content. So I believe Google Analytics changed the navigation. If you go under behavior and then to site content, you'll see all of the top pages of your site and they have all the different stats there for you to look at but what I recommend is since that you know that sites that those pages are getting traffic you want to look at the um, visit duration mm -hmm. and the bounce rate and make sure you're, you're just because a page is getting a lot of traffic doesn't mean it's working well for you people may be bouncing right out so you want to look at the pages with the lowest bounce rate and see what you can do to improve those pages. So go through, you know, if they're old, they're probably you probably weren't optimizing as well. You probably didn't include um, images in some of them. You probably definitely didn't include internal linking. 
Um, so like if you if you see a post that's getting a ton of traffic, and you know it could get be getting 20 or 30 percent or more of your total site traffic one page, and you find that it has no internal links, you should absolutely go back, add some internal links. Now you'll be driving more traffic further into your site. That'll improve time on site, which will improve your Google ranking. Uh, so there's a ton of things you can do there. Um, and then related to that is if you look at your referrers. So that referrers are the sites that are sending you, that are linking to you. So you can go in and look at your top sites that are sending you um, that are linking to your pages, and you can put in the, that's a prime spot. So so those pages that other people are linking to are getting most of the page rank. That's where all the page rank is coming into your site is those sites that are linking to you. If you take those pages that people are linking to and then go put internal links that go deeper into your site, uh, that transfers more of that where more of that page rank juice right where you want it to go. So you can greatly improve the ranking of pages that way. And a lot of people, I mean, most people are lucky if they have one or two internal links in a blog post. And most people that I see, you have none. Yeah. You know, they don't. You don't want to rely on the the four related links. That basically doesn't count. Those help for crawling. You want the links, when I'm saying internal links, I mean within the text of the blog post. You want to always be driving people and page rank deeper into your site to related topics. Um, I want to make sure when you're talking about the links that you're talking about so everybody understands, you're talking about going back and looking at maybe a successful blog post and trying to take that success that you've already had and make it even more successful based on doing some mm -hmm. things now that maybe you didn't do before. Right, and one thing I totally forgot to say, which is important, is also look at the top content and see what you can write now that's related to it. Can you maybe you can re totally update that old post that's re already doing well, or maybe you can do what I said before about writing a series: is go look at those old posts, and now maybe you see, oh, you know, I could easily write three or four more posts around this topic. And when you write those, you then link back to the old post. You have the old post linking out to the new posts. That's where you drive real rankings from. Um, and related to that, uh, you can also do that with Webmaster Tools. So within Webmaster Tools, uh, you can go under Top Pages, I believe it's called, and or no, Links to Your Site. Uh, they have a whole Links to Your Site section within Webmaster Tools. And within there, you can sort it by domain. And that will show you all the top pages in your site, again, that have the most links pointing at them. And those are you know, high value pages that you should be internally linking to the most appropriate places on your site. And finally, related to that on internal links, you can do the same exact thing for your own internal links on Webmaster Tools. So like we're talking about looking at where the other sites are linking to, you get the same report that shows you your own internal links of your own site where they're pointing to. So those count in this equation as well. So if you have, you know, hundreds of links pointing at that authority post that I was talking about. I definitely want to make sure that I go in and improve those those internal links to other related posts. Um, this, this is really cool. Uh, also, I just noticed here in the comments, I want to bring this question up from Scott because you talked about this a minute ago. Uh, Scott uh, Eggenberger, he writes, can you explain how the plus ones transfer to your site if you've included a link to the post? Don't people have to click the link? Sorry, I re Rewatched it and didn't get it. So right. uh, you, you talked about that a moment ago. Yeah. So there's two ways to share a link to your site. Well, there's a, there's a few, but there's two main ways to to get the the plus ones to transfer. You can do the embedded link option, which you click on the share a link um, button on Google Plus and put it in there, and it you know gives you the little image and a little description, and then you write a little post to go along with it and share it. When people plus one that share, that post on Google+, Plus, those pluses will automatically transfer to your blog post itself. Even, now, even, even though they're not plusing it on your right. web page. Is right. that only if you have things set up correctly, your authorship set up correctly, or is that just a general, when you share a link and someone pluses, it's going to transfer to that site? I believe it's uh, I, the authorship is a good question, but I don't believe authorship comes into play there. It's just okay. going to transfer. Say if I tra if I shared your link, yep. um, so the plus is, yes, you're right. So if, yep, I just answered my own question. Yeah, so it doesn't. Yep. So then the uh, the other way that separate. people like to share blog posts is you know because the old way it just updated, but 
you used to, when you did the embedded link, you get a little crappy picture and a little crappy description. It doesn't get as much engagement. So a lot of people like to share a Google Plus post with a big, they do a photo post, right. and use a big, use a big image. And then within that post, you write a little description, include the single link to your site within the description of that post. So if you just include one link, so it's just the link to your blog post, when people plus that post on Google+, those plus ones will transfer to your blog post. If, yeah, you, include, if you include yeah. more than one link, then it won't work. But if right, you just include one link, then it'll work. A lot of people do a pin for later right, um, Pinterest link, which then adds two links. So you know they're trading off. They want yeah. that second link, but they're not transferring those plus ones to their site. Right. right. So, so if you want ranking on your site, whether you do it as a photo with one link or you do it as a true link, you just want one link. Right. Okay. Yep. Well, hopefully, hopefully, Scott, that answered uh, your your, uh, your question. Doug Moore had a great question here. He says, uh, "Where do you where do you go to get blog ideas?" Okay. I have a whole bunch of that. So and that's, well, that's where we're going to start looking for some gold, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, there's yeah, there's yeah, so much to talk about. It's so exciting. Well, well, you know, um, I bring I guess to me, I mean, uh, and I have to laugh because when I initially posted this event, I wrote, you know, epic series, you know, blogging for cash, part one, crush your competition, and you know, and, and Wade Harmon. Oh yeah, so we. We should talk about Wade, Wade Harmon immediately chimed in and said, well, you know, that's kind of harsh. Uh, I don't really want to crush my competition. I'm like, yeah, maybe you don't want to crush your competition, but I think everybody wants to be more successful than what they already are. Right. And, 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 and your, your competitors are, are a more friendly way to say it would be your peers. You know, right. they've, they've already laid the groundwork in a lot of cases, and it's very nice. easy to leverage that if you know where to look. See how nice I made that sound? <laughs> well, I, I do. So, so uh, you, you did make it sound really nice, but I'll go back to crushing your competition. So, so uh, how do you, how, you know, how do you do that? I mean, give, give us, give us a nugget there on this whole, on this whole area of getting blogging material, but also doing things better than your competitors. Yeah. So the first thing is going back to the writing a series. So it's always going to, in my, the way I look at things, it's always writing some type of a series because one post is never going to beat your competitors' one post. Or you know it can if you have a really strong site, but if you want to crush them, you need to write a series. So with that in mind, then you just need to come up with ideas, and you know you can start really basic. You can you know everyone monitors their competitors or their peers, and they're, and they're you know, but what they focus on is usually the wrong thing. They focus on what their their competitor is sharing and what their competitor is is saying. If you're looking for blog ideas for your stuff that you want people to you know salivate over. Go look at what their audience is saying, what your competitor's audience is saying on their comments on Google+. Um, you know, if they have a community, what their audience is saying, what their blog comments, what they're saying. A lot of times you'll find people asking over and over for more help. If you are the one that provides that, you know, that's just a really easy in. You know, you already have, you, 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 you're essentially leveraging their audience. And it's, it's so easy to find people asking those questions. As soon as, basically, I keep lists. Um, endless list of whenever I see a question <laughs> whenever I see a question come up more than once if, if that question's being asked twice by two different people and there's not a clear blog post that gets on my list of something I might want to write in the future so I'm always paying attention to what people are asking on in my competitors audience I, I this um, is really good I, I love the part about look about searching the comments of the blog posts of your competitors because you're right um, and I and now I'm realizing uh, what a huge opportunity I've missed at times because you write a blog post about something and people have all these questions in the comments and you know maybe that you, you're answering them a little bit there but why not just do another blog post to answer those questions because then you have a chance to rank that one as well yep yep and I, I think it's really important to think about your competitors audience it's usually people who just get lost in paying attention to their competitor so you know their competitor writes a great blog post and you're all impressed and you're like oh I gotta do that well, you might even go write a very similar post. But that's not going to do any good. Because they've you know, already or, written or you, it. Yeah, yeah right. or you might feel overwhelmed, like, oh, how can I do that? But even if it's the most complete, awesome post you've ever seen, well, go look at all the comments, and you'll see people asking more questions. That means it's not complete. Go answer those questions. Um, so then beyond that, you can analyze your competitors further. The next easiest thing is to do a site search in Google. So you can do a site colon search. So you site colon 
and your competitor's domain name, and then add a keyword, whatever keyword you're looking to create posts on, and that will automatically show you kind of the what Google thinks are the most important posts on your competitor's site. You know, it'll rank them just like it ranks anything else. Um, so that'll give you a, a, a real easy guide as to what Google thinks is most important on that guy's site for those topics and or for those keywords. And that can easily spur ideas for posts. That's a great idea. That's a great um, idea. And it's really simple. You know, everyone knows how to use Google, so that's cool. Um, yeah, and the next... Is. Go ahead. No, I was saying, if you don't know how to use Google, <laughs> it's like, uh, wake up. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, so, Doug, Doug Moore agrees with you. He thinks it's a great tip um, to look at the competitor's comments and crush it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, All right, give us more. Give us more. Yeah, we're running out of time. <laughs> Dang. Uh, so the next thing is BuzzSumo. Uh, it's a, sort of a new tool. And what BuzzSumo does is you can put in keywords or your competitor's site, uh, and it will show you every single post on your competitor's site and exactly how many shares it got across each social network, wow. uh, which which is invaluable. So if you wanted to rank in Google+, Plus, for example, and I was competing with David, I can put in David's site, and I can go see exactly how many pluses uh, all his posts have uh, received and how they've ranked. If I decided I wanted to compete with him on Twitter, I can sort by Twitter. So that is super important today when social signals matter so much. So you'll really be able to clearly see you know, which types of posts are getting the most um, the most likes, the most shares, the most tweets, um, and then you can come up with ideas from there. What a, great ideas on coming up with content because I think that's where people struggle with. I mean, anytime you're a writer, whether you're writing blog posts or, you know, a book or, or anything, you're always kind of every day waking up going, man, I want to write this awesome blog post or this awesome chapter or something, and you're always looking for ideas. and some of these ideas really, really are are, are awesome. Yeah. Um, uh, we've, so got that, uh, uh, we've got some comments coming in from YouTube. Um, I don't know if you, uh, Crystal Moore has um, posted too. Wanted to see if you could just uh, talk about this just a little bit. Um, she wants to know. Um, uh, sorry, that was the wrong one. Um, <laughs> That a lot of the effort on the part of a blogger needs to be done in preparation for earning money, and how do you catch the attention of followers needed even to start? I know yep. that's like a whole other show, but um, yeah, no, that's easy, and that 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 was part of my list that I had. Um, so using that authorship post that I wrote as an example, before I even really wrote a word about authorship actually over a year ago when I started on Google Plus um, or actually when I first very first got Circloscope plug uh, I built a circle on Google Plus of all the people that are sharing um, and commenting on authority posts so I have a circle of about 800 people that I've been engaging with for almost a year um, about Google authorship so when I go to write you know the whole reason I created it was because I knew that I would eventually um, either write on Google Authorship or at least be sharing a lot of content on Google Authorship. So all that time beforehand, I was engaging with the, my audience. I was building my audience before I even had content or sharing anything about it. So there's that really no, there's no quick, you know, path. I mean, you do have to do <laughs> some legwork. Here. Yeah, and I I think it really has changed recently. Um, where you know it used to kind of be if you blog it, they will come. I don't really believe that much at all anymore. You should be building your audience before you even blog. Your audience will tell you what to blog. And when you have, you know, you don't have to have a huge audience. But when you have 20 or so people that follow you, first, you know, because you've been interacting with them on Google Plus or whatever network, uh, then they'll, you'll kind of have an idea what they want to see. When you post it, you suddenly get 10 likes, and that inspires you to, to write more and do more. If you just go and write a blog post because you feel like writing a blog post, and you haven't interacted, you don't have an audience, it's not going to go anywhere. There's not going to be any readers. You're not going to rank. Well, that um, is so true. true. It, and, used and to I, be, it used to be that you know, someone like me, I didn't need an audience. I could optimize the hell out of my stuff, go write whatever content I wanted, and I would rank in Google and get an audience. You know, then you know, it's the other way around. These days, that does not work. And you actually, need the in, audience first. in the third part of our series, Mike Alton is going to talk a lot about um, marketing and and um, things that you can do to help. So, so Crystal should tune back in for that. Yeah, and one more thing related to that on BuzzSumo, which is really cool. 
So, uh, so Craig, um, can, you, can you spell that real quick? B-U-Z-Z-S-U-M-O. Just like it sounds. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, you can actually take a post that seems like something that you would want to write about, and you can view all the people that shared it. And then as you're looking at all the people that shared it, you can sort them by whether they're influencers, bloggers, companies, regular people. So what I was noticing is I haven't done a lot of this on BuzzSumo yet, but you could actually remove them all except for regular people. And that's those are the people you want to look at interacting with if you're new. So you can filter it all down to regular people, and then on BuzzSumo you can easily add all those people to a Twitter list. Um, if I was getting started, especially if I was planning on being big on Twitter, I would be adding all those people, all the regular people, to a Twitter list and interacting with them, you know, around making those lists around key topics. So then now when you, I'm ready ready to post something on that topic, I can tweet it out, and I'll have a built-in audience. And, of uh, course, here on Google+, Plus, you could be building topic circles. Right, like my authorship can, circle. Right. You can, um, you know, go look at the ripples of, um, say, for example, for... For Craig's um, post that did so well, go look at the per the ripples for that. Um, you could actually add all those people to a circle using Circloscope. There's a plug, yeah. and um, <laughs> and um, start start engaging with you know the people who are interested in the topics you're writing about. Right. Is Absolutely. there a, is there a charge for the uh, for using BuzzSumo? BuzzSumo is free. Uh, you awesome. just have to create an, it. It'll limit you if you're not logged in, but then you just create an account and it's free. Yeah, See, that's always amazes me. There are so many cool tools out there. Uh, you know, I sort of, I mean, I have a long list of tools that I should be using <laughs> that I'm not using, you know, because I haven't really learned how to use them yet. And right. uh, But it always amazes me. Every time I turn around, every, about every two weeks or three weeks, I come across some new incredible app or, or, or plug-in or something that helps you become more successful. Uh, and most of the time, they're free. It's... Yep. Uh, it's it's amazing the amount of um, data and the amount of uh, resources that are out there if you're really looking around. I mean, you can get a lot of the work done for you for little or no cost. And and it's it's huge and it's it's one of the biggest mistakes that bloggers make. I make it all the time, and and you're just saying you make it as you know the tools are there and then you don't use them. I don't. And it's, with something like BuzzSumo, it's so easy. So if you if I was going to write um, I don't know if I was going to write a blog post on content marketing. I know I want to write that post. I've already done the research as far as the keyword. I want to nail content marketing. All you have to do is go plug that keyword phrase into BuzzSumo, and before you've written your post, see what other see what has worked, and just cherry pick some of those ideas for your own post. And like and you, you said, you, and look for the gaps or the holes. Yep. Look for the gaps. Look for your or your angle. You know, look for a way to insert your personality. Anything you can do to to high, you know, take what you're, what's working for your competitors and make it yours. That's where friggin' gold is. Uh, Craig, you've given, given some amazing information in this show. This has been an awesome part one of this Blogging for Cash series. We've got about two minutes left. Craig, I want to give you a chance to plug yourself and uh, give everybody uh, all the different ways that they can reach you. Well, the best way to reach me is on Google+, because I ignore almost everything else. <laughs> uh, <laughs> In, in terms of uh, plugging, you know, definitely if you want to manage your circles, check out Circloscope. It can uh, really improve your engagement on Google+, at circloscope.com. And although I, I haven't been doing very much consulting, I do consulting calls and I, for what I consider an inexpensive rate of $125 an hour. And if anyone on the Online Money Show within the next 24 hours signs up, I'll give them 25% off. So wow. you can you can get me at craigfifield.com and we can talk about this stuff for hours. Until you run out of money. <laughs> until you run out of money. Well, yeah. and just as an example, I, I just had a guy this week um, that contacted me out of the blue for a consulting call, and it was 125 bucks, and he ended up with four pages of notes, and he basically knows everything he needs to fix on his site and what to do next. Yeah, definitely, definitely worth it. And, yeah. Absolutely. And, and I'm, and that, I'm feeling awful lucky because I can just ring you up anytime. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> under the guise of, oh, I wanted to ask you this about Surpluscope. Oh, yeah. by the way. <laughs> well, that's okay. I love doing it. And I can, love doing it so much. Can you look at much. my YouTube? 
I love doing it, and I actually end up consulting with people for free all the time. But the problem is, there's so many that you know I had to do some type of service. So I, sure. I think I priced it cheap enough that it works out well for for everybody. And, and I have the same problem because I, on the real estate side, I mean, oh my gosh, the real estate and mortgage and investing side, I, I get so many calls and so many people that want to just you know talk on the phone for hours and pick my brain. Yep. And um and you know uh, and ultimately I can't do that for everybody. Right, you know, it's just so not enough hours in the day, so I have to kind of limit who I can consult with and who who I can't. Uh, Craig, thank you so much for being yeah, thank on. Thank you, the, Craig. Definitely uh, cool. on the show. Thank you for having me. And and there were fun. there were definitely some things that I heard you talk about in here that I think maybe could allude to a future show. I have and so many, so much more in this list right here. We could do a whole another hour. Yeah, so. I think we definitely should. And and please go through the. Um, this comment stream on YouTube and here on Google Plus because there's a lot of questions we didn't get to. So oh yeah, absolutely. Try to get to them. Awesome. So, yeah, definitely. Hey, uh, I'll be I'll be digging for new blog posts in those comments. Yes. <laughs> cool. Uh, well, let's. Uh, uh, Christine, why don't you uh, give everybody your information and how they can reach you? Um, here on Google Plus, um, Christine DeGraff. Also, my website, my blog is christinedegraff.com, which, be, you know, kind of because of this series, I'm going to be redoing. Um, uh, I'm learning a lot already. And next week we have Nicholas Cardot, um, who I'm reading his book now, um, Blogging to the Third Power. He's going to um, give us a lot of information, and I'm um, really looking forward to that. Awesome. Hey, my name is David Oldenburg. I've been watching the Online Money Show. We're on every Friday, well, except the last couple weeks when I was sick, but we're on, we're on every Friday normally at 10 a.m. Pacific Time, 1 p.m. Eastern. And this, you've been watching part one of our epic four-part series, uh, Blogging for Cash. Uh, as Christine DeGraff said, next week uh, we have Nicholas. Is it Car Cardo or Car Cardot? Cardot. 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 Okay. Uh, then we're going to have a week where uh, Christine is going to be down at Social Media Marketing World down in San Diego. With Mia Voss, yes. With Mia Voss, awesome. and we're going to be doing a live show uh, from Social Media Marketing World. That's going to be cool. We're coming back with part three of the series with Mike Alton on promoting your blog. And, uh, and then the fourth week, we may have a couple of people on. We're going to be talking to some six-figure bloggers and actually giving you the meat and potatoes on how they are actually making that kind of money blogging, so that's going to be pretty cool too. Anyway, you can catch us at OnlineMoneyShow.com. There's a tab there for me. There's a tab there for Christine if you want to contact me. All of my social media links are there. Uh, same with Christine. Uh, anyway, have a great weekend. TGIF, and uh, we'll see you next Friday. Take care.